Shalom, and welcome back to Bnei Noach Academy, Thoughts on Life. Please remember to hit the like button, to subscribe, and most importantly, to share this insight and inspiration with friends and family. So, Yom Kippur took place. It happened. What now? What's supposed to be the mode of service of God right now? How are we supposed to conduct ourselves? How are we supposed to behave? Obviously, we're always supposed to behave in a good manner. But what happens now? So let's start first and foremost. When we go in the schedule of holidays, that is biblical holidays, in this Jewish month of Tishrei, well, we had Rosh Hashanah. Then we had the seven days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, which are part of the 10 days of repentance. And then we had Yom Kippur. And now... In four days from Yom Kippur, on the fifth day, that is, is going to be the festival of Sukkot. A Sukkah means a hut. The Some call it the festival, the harvest. Yes, it is associated with the harvest, but that's not the main reason for the festival. Rather, the main reason for it is, as the Torah says, that we are to observe this festival by sitting in huts to commemorate, to remember that, quote, I have housed your ancestors, that is the Hebrews that left Egypt in hut-like situation, meaning they were out in the desert, but yet they were surrounded by the clouds of glory that protected them from the heat of the sun, from the harshness of the elements. Although they were there, they were in the open environment, but yet they benefited from it, but not suffered from it. And thus we the, the mitzvah the commandment is to sit in a hut for the duration of seven days, meaning to eat there, the main meals, some even sleep in the sukkah, and experience that, where on the one hand you have the shade, and the other hand you can still see the sky because it's all it's, the shade is provided by plants, all various types of plants and branches. It has to actually be from something that grew from the ground. But what is really the idea behind it? What is really... The essence of it, well, coming from Yom Kippur, this represents the embrace of God. If you think about it, this sukkah is metaphorically like an embrace. When you embrace someone, you just grab them all around. And this is like God's embrace. We go into his embrace. In fact, this is the only commandment in the Torah where you just enter something and, for, and that is the way of observance. Usually you have to bring something into you or you have to physically make it part of you somehow. Here, just by entering this hut, which was constructed in accordance with the dictates of Jewish law, now one has observed this special mitzvah. This, Kabbalistically, as I said, is the idea of God's embrace. Coming from Yom Kippur, this is what we are to experience. And that's why also this is called Zman Simchatenu, the time of our joy. I want you to take a look for a moment. In chapter 27 of the book of Psalms, to get a better experience of it. If you look at verse 4, it says, One thing I ask of the Lord, only that do I ask to live in the house of Hashem, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, to frequent his temple. And then it continues in verse 5, and it says, he will shelter me in his pavilion. But the Hebrew word he uses is Sukkot. Sukkot is Sukkot. Sukkot is plural for Sukkot. His Sukkah on any on an evil day. Grant me the protections of his tent. Raise me high upon a rock. This actually is a psalm, which I've mentioned in the past, which is customarily recited throughout this season, beginning with the month of Elul, the last month of the year, throughout and ending with the final day of Sukkot, because this really summarizes everything that we're to experience. Here we go, that one, one thing I ask, Yom Kippur is that quote, one day of the year. And now we're going over, we're transitioning to after that, to post Yom Kippur, in which we experience God's embrace. Now, it's interesting that there's exactly four days between 
Yom Kippur and Sukkot. Well, it's brought down Kabbalistically that these four days correspond to the four letters of God's holy name. The Yud and the He and the Vav and the He. Thus, these days are also named, are also called, or I should say the kind of the, the moniker for it is in God's name. It's a very, very special time. So it's not just that we have to wait four days for Sukkot, but we're actually living in a very euphoric time now, a very special time. And I will explain in the next class, what exactly do we do with this? How, what exactly do we do to ensure the best possible experience?